Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about how to make this wedding band into Rhino 6. Are you ready? Let's get started. A student of mine, Rachel's daughter, is getting married and she would like to make this ring for her. I feel like really touched, so I would like to make this step by step and show you how to do this ring from the scratch. That's starting at the front view and we want to make a ring size. I will suggest you make whatever ring size is exactly the size that you're going to make. And then we are going to bring in the stone. The stone size that I have is two and a half millimeter. If you like to know how to make this stone, I have a video and also an entire stone setting course on the right top corner link here that you can check it out later. So for this stone, we will need to have about seven stone uh, on the top, so three on the left and three on the right. The best way to do it and we want to get it visually correct is using the polar array. I'm going to type a zero here and number I'm going to guess about maybe 20 and see how it goes. We wanted them to go 360 degree. Now the stone in between you want them to get as close as possible without touching so let's change it to number 22 here and it looks really good for me. You can also turn on the record history if you want to and then we can change it later if we want to. For example, if you want to move the stone in a little bit, everybody will move in with that stone. Um, we don't want the stone getting too close to the bottom because uh, you don't want to cool it, stick it out, right? So having the gap in between, it's about 0.15 or 0.2 millimeter is kind of ideal. All right, so after that, we only need seven of them, but we want to remember this number 22 because we're going to use a multiple time to do it. The second thing is we need to create a setting for those seven stone first. So that's coming into uh, the perspective and we want to use the center with the rectangle. We want to snap in, make sure that your all snap is on and want to snap in into the quadrant. This is will be our center. Then coming into the right view, basically we want to know how wide this is going to be for the wall. Uh, you do not want to have a wall to things because you won't have enough prong to snap into it. And let's go ahead to move it from the midpoint of this square to the quadrant of that circle. And apparently it is not tall enough, so we want to do the 1D scale and moving it up a little bit thicker. I will suggest over the table high because you rather have enough than not enough. Okay, so once we have that, um, we're going to creating a seat and duplicate it seven times. The best way to do it is actually rotating this curve. So I'm going to use the rotate tool, set it up as a zero, moving, holding the shift, and instead of moving, it's not too accurate. I'm going to just type in the angle. It's 360 divided by 44 uh, because we have a 22 stone over there. And make sure that you want to copy equal yes. And um, then that will give us a copy over there. We just need to mirror to the other side. So then you will have something like this. Let's take a look on the perspective and then you feel like if you feel like you want to taper down from the bottom, you can do it now by click on both of them and click on those four control points right here, one, two, three, four, and kind of scale it down a little bit so it's more elegant if it is tapered, something like that. We're going to creating the surface by using the loft tool and loft from here to here, and then we'll get this surface there. Don't forget to make them into the solid by using the cap command. All right, so once we have that one, we are going to cutting an opening there. So that's just simply using the cylinder and I'm going to snapping into here for whatever size you think is appropriate. And then we want cylinder longer than the box we just create. 
you may want to skin it down just a little bit. Ideally, we just want to have an opening cutout so the stone will look brighter. As using the bowling difference, we're going to difference this out of this one. So then we will have an opening there. Now remember, you want to chamfer the edges, otherwise your tool has no way, no way to go. So let's go ahead to using the chamfer edges. I would like to try 0.25 millimeter and we're gonna go here, here, here. This is where it's going to touch the neighbor once we make the duplication. So we want to chamfer the edge a little bit. Okay. All right. So once we get that, um, don't forget to creating the C for the stone. We can simply just creating the color. The color is going to go like this way. We're going to draw a line and follow the stone carefully. We can simply go a little bit deeper than the stone. That's fine. And somewhere about half size of the pavilion and have it coming down like this. And if you feel like it might be too big of the hole, maybe I want to move in just a little bit something like that so the hole won't be like a way too big to creating into the solid we're gonna revolve this guy snapping into the zero and holding the shift for 360 degree and don't forget to cap it right so now we have that color for our stone we are going to use the bowling difference this one out of this one then you will see a hole there let me turn the stone off to show you what that is so stone will have a seat and then you will have a hole there all right so we need to make a copy of them the best way is again polar array and we can delete the extra we already know that that is 22 number there so i'm going to snapping into the zero and do 22 there we can simply just delete any things that we don't need and go ahead to bowling union together all right so the top part is already done and we need to do the side coming down and what I like to do is to creating an extra shank to the stone so what I like to do is I still having the cross section there and I'm going to just rotate that one from the end point to this end point over there and having that one to mirror to the other side. So I'm going to turn this one into the red color. It might be easier for you to see. All right. So those two curve um, in the red color, it's helping us to creating the shank and that's using the sweep one rail for this is the rail. This is the cross section go from here to here and we creating this shank there. And apparently the shank is way too big. We are need to we need to address that. So what I like to do is I need to create another curve for follow this one. Let's go ahead to draw a line to see where we are going to cut out for this one. Coming over here, mirror to the other side and using that to trim this one off. Okay, so let's decide how big of the bottom of a ring shank that we want. And roughly I'm going to do something like that. And that will be our ring shank. And I also want to have a line coming over here nicely. So I'm going to draw a line right here, roughly about this. And I'm going to using the blend command to blend from this end to this end. So it will come out nicely over there. Just need to mirror that to the other side. Since it's a symmetrical, we use the mirror a lot in this demonstration and join them. And if you look at the perspective, notice that it was snapping at the corner, not the midpoint. So we come back to the front view using the command project to C plane. And we want to delete the input so they will be straight. Let's also split this circle by those two. So then we can have two rail there. Let's find a cross section by duplicate the edges of one, two, three, and four. And again, on the other side, one, two, three, and four, and make sure you join them. So now we have a cross section there as well. If you don't like this taper happen on the bottom over there, you can creating another cross section by using the rectangle three point and snapping into the quadrant here, quadrant there, 
and coming into the right view to decide it how wide you want this ring on the bottom of the ring shank for example and make sure that you move it back to the end point there all right so now we got everything let's go ahead to sweep two rail one rail two cross section one two and three a lot of time i like to move my arrow right in the middle and to align over there so you will get something like this you have the option for maintain the height or you will change it based on whatever the distance that you have in between two rails. So I'm going to stay with the maintain the height. Let's go ahead to join this surface there. And we also want to cap it. To make it really nicely to connect each other, we probably want to give the same chamfer. So that was two, uh, 0.25 here. So I'm going to do 0.25 here as well. And also 0.25 over there as well. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, one more thing we need to do is we, we do not want to have a channel looking things and plus it's been cutting there. We do want it to cut out the middle. So let's come back here. I'm going to join back those two curves and then going to making a copy roughly like this one. Let's go ahead to pipe it. I'm going to pipe it roughly about this size. And if it is still too thick, you can always using the gumbo 1D scale to make it lower. We want to try bowling difference, this one out of this one. So then we will have a clean cut over there. And don't forget to cut the bottom of uh, inside of a ring shank as well is because it was straight on the bottom of each seat. What we wanted to do is extrude a planar curve straight and make sure you want to do both sides. And then you are going to bowling difference the seat out of this one. And rest of it will be just bowling together. I hope you enjoy the video and congratulations Rachel for having your dollars waiting. If you're interested in more jewelry care program with the Rhino, I have a new course list on the right top corner. Check it out and I hope you enjoy the video today. See you next.